Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today you've tuned in to my video series called Way Out Wednesdays, the acronym of WOW. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. And if you're interested in this type of content, you can go to my main YouTube channel, go to playlist. You go to my main YouTube channel by clicking the, the logo or the icon. Then you'll go to playlist and you'll see a playlist for wow and you can learn about everything soul contracts sasquatch aliens spirit keeping ghost negative energies multiple versions of you running around the planet at the same time and a lot more but today we're going to talk about psychic about being psychic about being more psychic about accepting our psychic abilities how to grow them how to know we are psychic. All those questions, we're going to try to tackle a lot of that in a short amount of time. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to tell you is you're psychic. <laughs> so you can just click off the video right now and just say, this is some lady on YouTube named Susan said, I'm psychic. That's all I need to know. I'm good, right? So that's cool. If you want to do that, more power to you, right? However, for the rest of us that want to watch this video and maybe glean some important ways in which you may really be psychic and not know it. Now, let me start with a little bit of a story. And that is, is that while well, I could always see ghosts, I could always see energy. I could always see dead people. Frankly, I didn't think it was like a prize or anything as a child to be able to see dead people and ghosts and freaking orbs and eyes and just hear things was not my idea of a fun time. Okay. So I blocked it. And that's probably what you've done too. You've blocked it, especially if you're pretty open. Now, let me take this moment to say, we're all different. We all have different little fingerprints, right? Otherwise the police wouldn't be able to catch the robber. But we also have all very different psychic abilities. Just because you don't have this or that doesn't mean you're not psychic. It means that your abilities are different than whoever you're comparing yourself to. Okay. So back to my story. I grew up knowing that I could see ghosts. I blocked them. Wasn't a good thing. As an adult, moved into a haunted town <laughs> full of haunted houses and all of a sudden, um, it was cool to have a ghost, right? My friends had ghosts. It was like they were pets or something. Yeah, that's Edna. She's in the upstairs room and you can hear her running the sewing machine. And honestly, you could hear it. And God forbid you ever stayed in their house. She didn't like anybody staying in that room. And if you stayed in that room, you would wake up with a lot of your stuff thrown about the room. Sometimes she would take your clothes out of the closet, throw them on the floor. Not just like they fell off the hanger on the floor. They're five feet from the closet. Obviously, there was some energy behind that, right? It wasn't just a, oh, all my clothes slid off of their hangers and now on a pool on the floor. No, my shirt's over there by the, uh, you know, dresser. So it became cool to have a ghost, right? So then I started relaxing and enjoying, you know, I'm young, I've got all these friends, we're all single, we're all having a good time. All of us are renting in these old <laughs> haunted houses because that's the cheap place to live, right? So we all have ghosts. So it just got to be normal that I became the go-to ghost friend. Um, what does that mean? It means I started opening up to my abilities or at least my ghost abilities anyway. And, and, you know, for a long time, that was fun. Never thought it would be a career. Didn't want it to be a career. And frankly, I put a lot of boundaries around these ghosts, right? Like for my ghost, you can't be moving my things. Do not move my things. This is a no-go. Cross that line. I'm going to have to evict your ghost, but, you know, onto the street. So, no, this wasn't like something that I wanted to do for a living. I mean, why would I want to talk to dead people, right? Um, it wasn't something that I thought, I thought it was a, I'm, I almost said parlor trick, but it kind of is, it was in a sense, right? It was fun. It was, uh, it wasn't anything serious. Let's just put it that way. It wasn't anything serious. None of us 
thank God had any kind of crazy ghost, you know, other than Edna, uh, we didn't have any crazy ghosts. So it was fun. Now, fast forward again to this story where it's a long story, make it really short. I was a professional photographer for 23 years. My spirit guides kept telling me, you're going to be a psychic and a medium. Uh, and I was like, no, I'm not. I mean, I am not, you know, that is a no-go. So let's just say they use their ways to persuade me. <laughs> um, and, and they, and they do, they'll, they'll get, if your soul path is to be X, Y, Z, I don't care if it's a plumber or an artist or a psychic, whatever it is, your spirit guides will move heaven and earth to help you get on, stay on your soul's path. That is their job. Okay. So my, my soul's path apparently was to be a photographer and then to be a psychic and a medium. And so they use their ways, you know, they, they did their things that made it untenable for me to be a photographer. Uh, one of the things was I started getting psychic diarrhea. I was really, I, every time I see that, I'm like, that is so harsh, such a harsh description, right? Well, it's true. Uh, I would be photographing someone and tell them uh, their future. <laughs> oh, you're going to get married. What, what do you mean married? I didn't, I'm not getting married. Is is my, do you? Do you work? Do you, did he come to get his photograph? I'm like, what? You know, um, I have to back out of that really quickly. Right in the South, we call that crawfishing. <laughs> I had to crawfish out of that really quickly and make up some reason. Well, this just kept getting worse and worse and worse to the point where let's just say I started knowing things about my clients that were not comfortable for me to know. So that and a, a bunch of other things happened that you know, they brought people into my life. They, they, they brought people into my life that encouraged me to do the work. I found a mentor, you know, all these things started, the puzzle pieces started all falling together. But the interesting thing about this is that the whole time I thought I was a medium because I could see ghosts. I could see, you know, I knew ghosts. I could feel ghosts. I could talk to ghosts, whatever. It was all about ghosts. So I thought, I'm a medium. You guys, I didn't know I was psychic. And I swear, I did not know I was psychic. I never thought to ask. I never, nobody told me I was psychic. Uh, I just thought I'm a medium. Well, let me just tell you guys, if you're waiting for someone like me, like Susan, to say, you're a psychic or you're a medium, you may have a long wait. <laughs> no one told me. So I started practicing as a medium and then I started giving, now it never occurred to me, maybe you're watching this video and going, uh, Susan, uh, you were just giving psychic greetings to your photography clients. I know. And I bet that you are psychic and you don't know it either. That's why I'm telling you this story, right? Now, let me explain to you how you're psychic and you don't know it. I'm going to give you some examples. Let's just say that you're the person who walks into the room of the hotel and you're like, whoa, oh no, this is gross. I don't know what this is. And your partner, your friend is like, something on the bed? What'd you find? You know, they're looking for physical evidence of grossness. You're talking energetic level of grossness. You're like, I don't know. If something's in here, what's in here? I don't know, Beth. I don't know what's in here. Something's in here. Well, can, you know, your, your muggle friends, <laughs> your friends that aren't psychic struggle. They struggle with this, right? As they get to know this new part of you, or maybe they've always known that you've been like this. They're like, she just feels some energy. She feels energy. And meanwhile, you're like, you know, not, I'm not going in the bathroom. I'm not going. And, you know, they make excuses for you, you know, and then they're like, hey, Stop acting like this. It's weird. Now this guy I'm dating, you know what I mean? That's psychic. Yeah. Is it being an empath? Yes. Some of you don't even think you're empaths. Do you have to be a psychic to be an empath? Do you have to be an empath to be a psychic? No. An empath is when you feel everything. You can feel someone's anger. You can feel someone's disgust. You can feel someone's sadness, you can feel the sadness of a city. You can feel that this 
bathroom in this hotel is janky. That's, that's being an empath. However, you could walk into that same hotel room and know, I know, I know this, this, this place, bad things happen in this hotel. I know. Beth, how do you know? What happened? What do you, what do you mean? Did you see something? Did you read something on, on a review and you didn't tell me and now I'm here and I can't back out? Why do you always do that to me? You wait till we get here and then you tell me something's janky with the energy or, or you know something, you know, we can't help it. <laughs> we can't help it. If we're not employing our psychic abilities before we book the place, well, then we walk in and we're like, yeah, this is a no-go. So you can feel or you can know. I don't know. I just know. Which ones of you have been, have told a spouse, a friend, a coworker, a stranger, I just know that this tree is going to fall one day. How do you know? It looks perfectly healthy to me. I, I just know. I just know that my son is going to get into this university that he wants to get into. How do you know? I don't know. I just know. When you say those words, I don't know. I just know. And then the reason you're saying them is because you're right. Because the way our society works is that if you started saying things and you were wrong all the time, you would stop saying it. Think about it. You wouldn't put it out there for public consumption and look like an idiot if you were wrong more often than not. When you have knowings, you're right more often than not. And you have this energy in your body that just feels so urgent and so strong. I know, I just know it. And then when you don't do what you knew you should have done, what do you say? I knew I should have done that. I knew it. I knew that was going to happen, right? Well, you get mad. You get mad because you have that feeling that was so strong and you know better. You and I know better that we should have trusted that feeling. I knew he was going to be a lousy cheat. I knew it. Why didn't I listen to myself? Honey, you ain't listening to yourself. That ain't yourself talking. That's your spirit guides talking to you. Listen to them. You do a lot better. So you may feel. You may know. You may see. Now, let me give you a tip. Watch how you talk to people. If you say, I know our boss is leaving. I just know it. How do you know? Don't know, just know. Bingo. I have a feeling. I just feel, I feel our boss is going to go for another job. How, do you have some, some, you know, receipts for that feeling? No, I do not. I just feel it. I can see our boss taking that job. Why would he take that job? That job isn't any better. I don't know. I just see it. I see it happening. Pay attention to how you talk to yourself and others because that belies the psychic ability you're tapping into. Psychic knowing, psychic seeing, psychic feeling. They all have names. Clairsentience, clairvoyance, claircognizance. But you can just call it psychic knowing, psychic seeing, and psychic feeling if you want. Those are the strongest. We all have multiple, uh, well, we call them clairs because clairsentience, claircognizance, clairvoyance, clair meaning clear in French, voyance meaning seeing, clear seeing, right? So we just call the whole bunch of these abilities the Claire's, okay? So if you hear me refer to the Claire's, that's what I'm talking about. So we all have multiple Claire's, multiple psychic abilities. Maybe seeing is not your thing. You don't, 
You're not a person that can imagine visuals, right? Maybe knowing is your thing. Maybe feeling is your thing. Maybe knowing and feeling is your thing. We, it's, it's not, you don't just get one. <laughs> you can have all of them. You can have all of the Claire's. There's even more. You can have all of them, but I will guarantee you that there's one that is your dominant. Um, and sometimes that's switching off with another dominant, but you can use and develop all of them. It's just like a muscle. If you don't use the muscle, it's flabby. It isn't going to work for you. If you exercise the muscle, it's strong. It's going to work for you. So the other Claire would be Claire audience, psychic hearing. Now, psychic hearing is not that common. And what that means is, is that I'm very Claire audience. However, it's not my dominant Claire. My dominant Claire is probably claircognizance and then followed up with clairvoyance and then probably clairaudience and clairsentience kind of are in third place somewhere. So clairaudience is interesting. Psychic hearing. Now, psychic hearing, if you've ever heard your name called and no one is there, if you've ever heard now, this is external, like you hear your name called and you're like, hello, what? You're like, what? And then you realize everybody's left the house and you're the only one there. Very disconcerting because you heard it externally. You could see something externally in front of you, an orb, a ghost. However, these clairs are, uh, you could also, they want to say also, you could feel uh, someone, a, a, a common thing is just feeling your hair, just kind of, just, you know, it's like, ah, stop it, you know, stop it. No, oh, it drives me crazy. They just pick up one little strand of hair, right? Or uh, you may feel, physically feel someone laying next to you in the bed or a pet jump on the bed. You may hear a pet walk down the hallway and swear to God, you heard it externally in the 3D. Now, all of these same things happen internally and it's very subtle. I want you to understand that these external psychic experiences that you have are rare are rare. If you're expecting that to be the harbinger, if you're expecting that to be your psychic experience and, and you're not psychic, if it doesn't happen, you might as well just give up because it's not going to happen very often. And if it does, your brain goes into overdrive, trying to understand it, trying to explain it, right? How did my shirt get off of the hanger in the closet. The closet door is open. Okay. The door didn't open. The door was open when I went to bed, but my shirt is five feet from the closet. How can I explain that? Right. The wind blew it. I mean, you know, the AC blew it, the fan blew it. I mean, you know, we are going to come up with some examples and some explanations because we can't, our brain cannot make sense of it. When your brain cannot make sense of things, it discards it. This is not useful information. You're going to forget. You've forgotten already many psychic things that have happened to you. Ask your friends. Your friends will remember. You will forget because your brain cannot make sense of it. Okay? So the real psychic experiences that you have are subtle. Very subtle. So I want to explain a little bit more when you are experiencing clairaudience, psychic hearing, it's it's like, it's very strange. It's like you're hearing it, but you're not sure you're hearing it. So this is when it's happening inside. You're hearing music play, but it's so subtle. It sounds like music is playing on low three rooms away. Now, how am I going to hear music playing three rooms away on low? 
It's here and far away all at the same time. That's that's clear audience. Clear audience can also show up as your own thoughts. You could hear your own voice in your own head say something to you and assume it's your own voice in your own head. But in reality, it's your spirit guides talking to you. It can also show up in your own head in a different voice with an accent, with a female sounding or a male sounding or a foreign accent or a weird type of cadence of voice. These are all possible if you're experiencing clear audience. Now, let me explain another way that you would know which of these clairs are probably dominant in your energy. This is very interesting to me. If you're a visual person, if you're a visual person, you like to have uh, beautiful things around you. You like to look out the window and see something pretty. Um, You like color. You like design. You like photography. You like art. You like to visit museums or you like to visit antique places just because of the visuals. Um, You can think in visuals. You can remember vacations and remember the color of the sky. You can remember the way the waves looked. You can remember what somebody wore. Remember when we went to this and you wore the cowboy hat? You know, okay, if you say so, right? Then you're visual. If you're a visual person, you have clairvoyance. Your your human your human abilities, your human uh I don't even know what to call them. Your human uh your whatever they are, abilities will match your psychic abilities. So if you're very visual, you're going to be clairvoyant. If you're a thinker, if you're a person that mulls things over in your head, if you're a person that likes to turn things around and think about them from different angles and analyze things, if you're a practical, pragmatic person, you're claircognizant. You have psychic thinking. Now, that one in particular is the hardest one, in my opinion, to recognize. Because if you're clairvoyant, you have psychic seeing, and you see something out of the corner of your eye, you're pretty sure you saw it, especially if it made you look. If you're doing that, you saw something, you know you saw something, you don't know why it's not there anymore because you know you saw something. Clairvoyant, you can't deny it, right? But with claircognizance, psychic thinking, Our thoughts get all wrapped up in the guidance that is coming to us. And we think it's us. We think it's our own thoughts. It's not our own thoughts. And there's really, it's really hard for practical, pragmatic people to believe that they're psychic because it's just all wrapped up and you think it's you. Honestly, As you might imagine, practical, pragmatic people that are also claircognizant are often right. They're just often right. They're not egotistical about it because that's not why they're they're problem solvers. They just want to solve problems and they like solving problems. And so people come to them to solve problems. And also when you tell people, I know this is going to happen. How do you know it's going to just trust me? You get short tempered with people. Just don't ask. I know it's going to happen. You get short tempered because you know that when you feel this way, that it always happens. 99% of the time it happens. And if you've lived a certain amount of life, you've experienced it and you know it's going to happen. So you're short tempered with people because you're like, just trust me, it's going to happen. Get over there. This car is going to slide on the ice. And then it happens and they look at you and you're like, I told you it was going to happen. 
you need to start listening to me, right? Like you do with a kid. You need to start listening to me. I've lived life. You need to learn from me. It's also clear cognizance. So I would just say to you, you're not as smart as you think you are. You've been cheating. You've been getting help from spirit. <laughs> and I'm very clear cognizant. I know this. It's it's and it also when you're practical and pragmatic, you know, anything could happen right in front of you and you would say, "Yeah, no, that didn't happen." Or you'd make some excuse for it, right? So those of us that are the overthinkers, that are the practical pragmatic people that tell people just trust me, I know and I don't know how I know, you're effing psychic. Get over it, accept it, stop fighting it. That's all I have to say to you. Now, let's move on. Clairsentient. Well, if you're a person that cries at movies, that cries at songs, that can't watch violent things because you just cannot, it's just too much. It's too much for your energy. That's clairsentient. Yes, a lot of clairsentient people or psychic feeling people are empaths, but you can be an empath and be claircognizant, okay? It, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, that you can't be an empath. And honestly, an empath is a psychic. Uh, it's just a, a another way of saying you're psychic. Like people don't want to be psychic. They don't want to be special. They, they think that's special and I'm not special right? Um, it doesn't matter if you want to be special or not. You just are. And, and being psychic isn't special. It, we're all psychic. Um, acknowledging that you're psychic, acknowledging that you have this intuition, acknowledging that you want to work more with this energy, that you were blessed by it and you want to bless the energy by, by being a part of this give and take in this psychic energy world. You know, that's that's really, that's that's probably your soul path. It doesn't mean necessarily that you're supposed to have a YouTube channel or be a professional psychic, but it does mean that you are to work with the energy. And again, I'm doing this. It's a give and take. You connect to the energy, you get the message. You connect to the energy, you get the message. So the clairsentient people, you guys would be the ones that that feel the janky energy in the basement. <laughs> and you're like, I never want to do laundry because there's something in the basement. And then you're like, see, the cat won't go down there either. So you're looking for backup, right? Um, trust that. Trust all of the data that you have. And know that even if you're really intensely claircognizant psychic thinking, that you're still going to have feelings. You may not have feelings all the time, but you're still going to get those hits. You're going to, those other psychic clairs are going to come through with information. Sometimes you go through a period of time where you're seeing things. And then you go through a period of time when you're feeling things. And then you go through a period of time when you're having more psychic hearing or another period of time when you're having two or three of those at a time. And then you go through a period of time where all's quiet, where you're just not getting much. You're not having many psychic experiences. That's all okay. It doesn't, and, and a frequent question is, I used to have these abilities and now they're gone. Can I get them back? Yes, absolutely, because they're not gone. You might think of them as asleep. You know, we often, we are very psychic as children. Then we go to school and we learn that having the, you know, invisible friend or telling the teacher that she's, you know, going to have a baby is probably not acceptable because she's not even showing, right? How would you know that? You learn this is not acceptable in our society, so you block it. So we often start blocking these abilities around school age. Then, in my experience, they kind of come back out sometimes in the 20s and 30s, depending on what you're doing in your 20s and 30s. If you are really dialed in, um, to like, let's say, I mean, even if you're in college, it doesn't matter. It really depends on 
how much free time you have. If you're a college student and you have no free time, you're just burning the midnight oil, you're constantly studying, you're constantly striving, then your psychic abilities are going to be on hiatus. If you're in the job, you're constantly struggling and striving, you're going to school too, you're doing three things at once, your psychic abilities are going to be on hiatus. Why? Because our thinking brain blocks all of that. If your thinking brain is in charge of your life, and sometimes it needs to be, I mean, sometimes it just needs to be, that's okay. Then your psychic abilities will take a back seat. When you have a time in your life where maybe things aren't, your brain isn't quite so engaged. Maybe there's a time in your life where you've made more time for exercise or hobbies or you're having more vacation. Those are times when your thinking brain is on vacation and then the psychic abilities can start happening again. Psychic abilities happen in the mundane, doing the dishes, vacuuming, washing the car, but also exercising, doing a hobby. Anything where your brain isn't just totally crunching information. That's when your psychic abilities can really start sending the information to you. Our psychic abilities come to us through our imagination. Now this trips up people because they say to me all the time, I'm just imagining this. Well, you are because your imagination is the language of spirit. So one way that I tell people to use to really connect to your psychic abilities is to imagine. So if you said to your friend, if you were just playing around, playing is good. It's the opposite of thinking. Playing is where this is where spirit can play with you. This is non-physical. So you're not going to find the answers in the physical. So let's say you're playing around with your friend and you don't know much about their childhood. And you say, I would imagine if I were to imagine you as a 10 year old, this is what I imagine you to be like. Now, what just happened? You use the magic word, imagine. When your brain hears you're imagining, it says, peace out. I'm going to go over here because you're talking to somebody that's not me. I'm not an, I don't, I don't imagine things. I, I know things. I'm a 3D tool. Imagination is a subconscious tool. So use the word I would imagine and then say whatever comes to your mind. This is very important. You have to say whatever comes to your mind. Even if it comes out before you can edit it, that's perfect because that's the real deal. Because if your brain is sneakily editing your psychic hits, then you're going to be wrong. Honestly, you're going to use your brain. You're going to be wrong. So one way to play with this is to grab a friend and say, I would imagine that you as a five-year-old were like this. You could also say, I can see you as a five-year-old being X, Y, Z. Now, what did you just do? You used the word see, which indicates that you were seeing it. Now, think about that. Did you really see it? No, you didn't see it in front of you. You did see it in your mind's eye, but your brain computed that to words before you acknowledged that you saw it. So when you say, I see you as a five-year-old, I want you to pause a little bit and see it. What are you seeing? What colors are you seeing? Describe it in detail. If you're seeing it, describe it. Describe what you're seeing. If you say, I know, I just know you were a kick in the pants when you were five right? Now you might say, I know you were kicking the pants when you were five, 
and I see you fighting with your older brothers. What did you just do? You used two clairs at once. You went from claircognizance, knowing, to seeing. Pay attention. These are tells as to how you're dealing with the energy. So using the word imagine is a great way to start playing with your own abilities. Now, let me tell you something. That is, you've got to play with others. If you are going to judge your own psychic abilities on you, on your ability to get messages, on your ability to speak to your spirit guides, well, you're going to never know you're psychic, just like I did not know I was psychic. I was talking to my spirit guides. I didn't know I was psychic. Plus, we are thwarted. <laughs> Getting our own messages is so hard because there's so much emotion. There's so much fear. There's so many hidden trips and hazards. Conditioning. Limiting beliefs. It's like an obstacle course that your spirit guides have to go over, under, and around to be able to get the message to you. So the more you are emotional about something or the more important to, uh, a question is, the least likely you're going to really get guidance for yourself. It blocks it. That's why I suggest, you know, go to the cards. If you're reading for yourself, use cards. It's going to mostly bypass your ego, your fears, your doubts, all of that. And then write it down. Because if you pull cards, you're going to be like, oh, well, that's pretty good. That's better than I thought. Everything's going to be okay. Guess what you're going to do? Your brain is going to take over. It's going to put the cards back down. And then you're going to go in the other room and worry about it. So write it down. It becomes more real when you write it down. Everything is going to be okay. I pulled these cards, right? It's, it's almost like the guides are saying, it's almost like biofeedback. You're, you're bringing the, the message all the way into your body and owning it. You're owning the message. You're not just, your brain isn't just able to throw it away, okay? If you want to know how psychic you really are, read for some friends, like I was just suggesting, because you don't really care <laughs> if they get the job or not. I mean, you care, but you know, you, you, you're going to be able to really tell them what you're getting. Now, I really suggest in the beginning that you read about their past. That's why we suggested that you read their childhood or read how they were at 16. Were they a bookworm? Were they a jock? Were they a nerd, right? What was going on with them at 16? What went on with them in their first job? What was the best summer? Now, how do you do that? Well, you can do it through feeling. You can do it through seeing, but you get your friend. Let's say your friend's name is Mary. One thing again you can do is take a pen and paper and write down Mary, just trace over. This sometimes gets the brain out of the picture because you're just doing this rote thing. So it can sometimes allow the brain to go sit down and then say, Mary, how was Mary at 16? And you might say, I'm getting, that's fine. I'm getting that you were silly, that you were fun. I'm getting that there was a crush I'm getting that you were feeling independent. There's this feeling of you having fun. And then I'm getting a feeling of the fun being minimized. Data. You just want to use the data. You don't want to make sense of it. You don't want to say, oh, then you must have got grounded because you had too much fun. That's the brain trying to make sense of the data. We don't want to make sense of the data. If you make sense of the data, you're going to be wrong. I sense expansion, fun, and then I sense contraction. Something happened to your fun. So how could that play out? 
Maybe she didn't get grounded. Maybe she broke her foot and couldn't have fun anymore. Contraction. I sense contraction. Broken foot, grounded, two completely different possibilities for the same energy. Just say the energy. If you see or know that she has a cast, then say, I see or I know that you had some sort of cast. Okay? If you don't see a cast, but you see contraction and less fun, just say that, right? So the way for you to know if you're psychic is to go to other people. I didn't know I was psychic until I started doing mediumship readings, bringing in people's crossed over loved ones. Then all of a sudden I'm telling them about their job. I'm telling them about their relationship. I didn't know I was psychic. I did not I honestly did not know. If you look at everything in my business right now, my email is info at susanlynnmedium.com. My website is susanlynnmedium.com. It's not susanlynnpsychicmedium.com, susanlynnpsychic.com. I didn't know. So I can imagine that you watching don't know either. And I can also imagine that if you're if you're gauging your own psychic abilities on reading yourself, you really think that you're not psychic because it's super hard for us to read ourselves. So grab a friend, read the past. What did the first relationship they were in feel like? You know, what was the feeling of their high school senior year? What was the feeling like of their first job? And then even though I'm asking, what is the feeling of the first job? I automatically saw ice cream. So maybe their first job was scooping ice cream. Did you see how I asked what the feeling was, but my clairvoyance is the first thing that connected? The clairs will just interchangeably pop in and out. And as you start to do this more often, your brain the subconscious part of your brain can take all of that different information, the seeing, the knowing, the hearing, the feeling, and it can make it all into words. Again, pay attention. I'm seeing. Now I know. I feel. Three clairs right there in that one sentence. So the other thing, uh, the other thing I didn't talk about is Claire Alliance which is clear, which is smelling, psychic smelling. So this is a very rare as well. So it doesn't mean it, it never happens. It just means that it happens once or twice a year if it's something that you really have uh, working for you. Now, again, remember how if you're a thinker, you have claircognizance. If you're visual, you have clairvoyance, right? Well, if you, and, and if you're, if you, if, sound is important to you. So if you're a psychic, if you have psychic hearing, sound is important to you. You would not be the kind of person that would play the radio and the TV at the same time. You don't like loud noise. You don't like cacophony. You don't like screaming. You're just as happy, silent. If you're going to listen to something, you're going to do it intentionally. You're going to intentionally listen to something. So if you're like that around music and around sound, you have clear auditory or clear audience. Now for smelling, are you the one that can walk in to someone's house and smell that they cooked last night? Oh my God, I smell oregano. Did you cook Italian? Yeah, last night. Does it smell bad in here? Shall I light a candle? No, no, I can just smell it. If you got a keen sense of smell, then you also have psychic smelling. Now, I don't have a keen sense of smell. I have a terrible sense of smell, but I still have psychic smelling. It's just the keener your sense of smell, the keener your psychic smelling will be. Psychic smelling is really a trip because it's in my nose. Like I smell cigarette smoke. That's the most common thing that people smell because 
our, a lot of our loved ones at a certain age, when you're my age and older, a lot of our loved ones smoked and they're crossed over. So that's a very easy thing for them to make happen here in the non-physical energy is cigarette smoke. So you're smelling cigarette smoke. Why am I smelling cigarette smoke? Nobody's smoking. That's clear alliance. That's psychic smelling. You may smell leather. If, if a, a parent or grandparent uh, was a horseback rider or worked with leather, you may smell cedar, uh, cedar shavings, or you may smell wood dust. You may smell vanilla. You may smell um, peppermint. You may smell a, a cologne or a floral scent that you associate with someone. Like if you associate rose smell with your mother, your grandmother, you may smell that. Now, here's how you know it's psychic. No one else smells it. No one can smell it but you. Same thing. I heard my name called, but no one is here or no one called my name. So clear audience, psychic hearing and psychic smelling, not very common, but it does happen. It can happen uh, once a year, twice a year, or less frequently, sometimes more frequently. But these are things you can work on. If you want to exercise this muscle, you can ask uh, your relatives and spirit to send you a smell, especially if a person, you associate a smell with a specific person, you can ask them, can you please, I'm trying to work on this. Can you please send me that smell? Now, it's not going to happen like this, you guys. This this is uh, our time frame and their time frame, completely different. So you ask, you put out the request, and then you forget about it. And then a day later, an hour later, or a week later, doesn't matter, you're smelling it. And then I promise you, because your brain is in charge at that moment, you forgot why you're smelling. Why am I smelling peppermint? What? What is? And it's really, it's like in your nose. It's, it, I can't describe it. You just have to experience it. And then you'll real remember, hopefully, oh my God, I asked to smell peppermint. Now I'm smelling peppermint. Oh my gosh, right? Now, if you write that stuff down, it'll really help you. Because again, you go, oh my God, that's so cool. I asked and I got it and wow, great. And then the phone rings and you forget all about it, right? Write it down. Because if you write these things down in a journal, you're seeing repeating numbers, write it down. You got a feather as a sign, write it down. You got a weird smell, write it down. You got a weird dream premonition, write it down. You had a knowing, write it down. A knowing that you had came true, write it down. What happens is you go back to that journal after some months or years and you read all that and it's in black and white right there in front of you. You cannot deny it. Your brain cannot helpfully help you forget it. You can't deny it. It's there. It will blow your mind if you write it down. And it will help you understand that when you saw 111, 111 for three weeks, and then two weeks later, you got the job. When you saw 555, which fives are generally change, you saw fives for like, you know, a month. You wrote it down dutifully. A month later, you got transferred, right? It, it can help you understand how spirit is working with you, but you're never going to figure it out if you don't write it down. I just, I promise you, you'll never put two and two together because your brain will put two and two in the trash because it doesn't make any sense to your brain. Now, the last one I'll talk to you guys about is Claire Gustin's, <laughs> which is psychic uh, tasting. Psychic tasting. Have you ever tasted something? Oh, I'm tasting cinnamon. But I haven't eaten cinnamon in months. Like I don't eat cinnamon. Oh, I'm thinking of my grandmother. She made those things. That was that cinnamon, that cinnamon cookie. And then we forget about it. You just had the 
communication with your grandmother through your own taste. You had a knowing about your grandmother. Two plus two equals nothing because your brain threw it away because it doesn't make any sense. You forgot all about it. Write it down. Today, I was doing washing the windows and I tasted cinnamon despite smelling ammonia, ammonia, right? Windex. Weird. And then I thought about my grandmother and I wrote it down while washing the windows and smelling Windex. I got this overpowering scent of cinnamon and I thought of my grandmother. Then a week later, you mention it to your mom. Mom, you know, I thought about our grand, my grandmother and I thought about cinnamon. It was so interesting. It was so weird because random I was washing the windows. Oh, honey, did you know that your grandmother loved to wash windows? That that was like her thing that she did when she was trying to figure out problems? No, I didn't know that. Really? Really? Like, why would she? I don't know. It was her thing. Whenever she was, I always knew when she was thinking about things because she would just go wash the windows. Confirmation. Two plus two is now confirmation that your grandmother sent you a message through your taste buds. And then you connected with her. You got the message. Your mother confirmed the whole thing only because you allowed that information to be valid. You didn't allow your brain to throw it out because it stayed valid in your energy. It stayed close to your energy. So when you were with your mom, you asked her and you got the validation. The last thing, and I have no idea how long this thing has been going (laughs) forever. (laughs) The last thing I will say to you guys, if you want more connection with your spirit guides, if you want more connection to your psychic abilities, the number one way to get there is through raising your vibration, raising your vibration. Your spirit guides are up here. Your angels, everything is up here. They love you 100%. 100%. If your energy is down here because you don't love yourself 100%, because humans think that's wrong. We think that's egotistical for people to love themselves. This has been a head game that's been done to us. It doesn't, loving ourselves doesn't mean we're egotistical it means we just care for ourselves. We're compassionate with ourselves. We take we take care of ourselves. That's not being egotistical. So if your spirit guides are up here and you're down here, kind of hard to connect, right? So raising your vibration so you're up here allows you to have more connection, more common connection, more sustained connection with your spirit guides. There are thousands of ways to raise your vibration. Google it. I probably have videos here. I know I have videos here on raising your vibration. I've talked about it a lot, but that is really the number one thing that I did that allowed me to talk to my spirit guides the way I do. I stopped the negative critiquing, the negative self-talk, which I thought was problem solving right? I'm just a problem solver. I don't want to make this mistake again. Therefore, I want to find out why I made the mistake. Well, that turns into a critiquing instead of a compassionate, loving acceptance of being human and making mistakes. That's a very different way to address a mistake than critiquing and trying to figure out why you made the mistake, okay? So I address my self-talk. I address my my the way that I talk to myself, the, how negative I was to myself. Instead, instead of saying, Susan, you big dummy, right? Why did you do that? Why are you dropping things? Why is this happening? Can't you ever learn? Don't you think you're old enough to not make this mistake? When are you ever going to, you know, you guys, that's, That's just keeping you down here. It's not helping a thing. It's not making you a better person. It's not. 
Instead, compassion. Susan, that was a mistake. There's no denying that was a mistake. Luckily, you've made mistakes in your life and you know how to fix them. I love you. You're going to be fine. You're worthy. You're lovable. This was just a mistake. This isn't the end of, you know, your life, right? Let's put it into a different type of framework and let's let's be gentle. I want to be gentle. You know, sometimes I hear myself saying, oh, Susan, you made a mistake. You know, like, oh, you fell down and skinned your knee to the three-year-old, you know? Oh, that's okay. Let's just go this way out of the parking lot and we'll, you know, we'll make the best of it. It's no biggie. That's self-talk that raises your vibration. Okay. So raise your vibration. You'll have better connection to your spirit guide. You have better connection to your psychic abilities. Let me know what you think. This was a full-on class for real, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm always interested to hear your experiences. And I really think that when we share, we all learn together. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for supporting my channel. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. If you click the notification bell, you'll know when it's Wednesday because I'll have a new video out. Take really good care of yourselves. Much love and blessings to you.